Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Welcome back. So, guys, we see Arctic sea ice isn't freezing in October for the first time on record. It's not. Yeah, this is interesting. The changes that we have going on on the planet right now are just incredible. And, you know, we're seeing things kind of pieced together it, from different scenarios that have been laid out and we've talked about before previously. For the first time since records began, the main nursery of Arctic sea ice in Siberia has yet to start freezing in late October. The delayed annual freeze in the Lapev Sea has caused, been caused by freakishly protracted warmth in northern Russia and the intrusion of Atlantic waters, say climate scientists who warn of possible knock-on effects across the polar region. So this automatically gets me thinking, uh-oh, and, and we're going to talk about why uh oh uh, ocean temperatures in the area recently climbed to more than five degrees celsius above average following a record-breaking heat wave and the unusually early decline of last winter's sea ice you know why is because it gets me thinking of the beaufort gyre which is a key arctic ocean current and this is from three years ago and three years ago it was acting strangely you know, so and this is this is exactly the scenario that's laid out in the movie The Day After Tomorrow. So what happens is that, you know, all the ice melt and everything causes it to flush as we look over here. And I got to wonder, you know, with the incursion of the Atlantic waters in there, is it is it getting ready to flush? Is it is it starting to flush? Uh, because when this water flushes on out then basically the Gulf Stream stops and its current changes. And instead of going and keeping Northern Europe and uh, Eastern North America warmer, mm -hmm. it's going to get very, very cold, very, very fast over there. It makes me kind of want to go look at that movie again. Yeah, that was, it was, it was a good movie, you know, a bit dramatic, you know, but at, they always are. They're always a little bit dramatic. But this is something that's very, very serious. The Beaufort Gyre holds as much fresh water as all the Great Lakes combined. And its continuing clockwise swirl is preventing the enormous volume of ice and cold fresh water from flushing into the North Atlantic Ocean. But scientists say the gyre will inevitably weaken and reverse direction. And when it does, it could expel a massive amount of icy fresh water into the nor North Atlantic. Polar oceanographer of Woods Hole uh, has labeled this anticipated surge of water a ticking climate bomb, noting that even a partial flush of that growing reservoir, a mere 5%, could temporarily cool the climate of Iceland and Northern Europe and have a major impact on commercial fisheries in North Atlantic. That's extremely concerning. Yeah, this will affect, you know, the, the food chain for one thing. Uh, the climate, you know, it, it, it is a trigger that could really just alter everything, as Edgar Casey said, in the blink of an eye. He did say Northern Europe was going to be changed in a twinkling of an eye. And I've always taken that to be more of a tsunami or something like that, a flooding event. I've always thought it was going to be perhaps the uh, Antarctica's ice sheets melting and, and then raising sea levels immediately. But maybe he was m more talking about just the onset of what would be like a uh, mini ice age up there it would be really sad i mean so many people would lose their livelihoods yeah it is but the world is going through massive massive changes right now and this is another uh, sign of that and speaking of signs we have asteroid 2020 uf3 flew past earth at 0.11 ld 14th of the month wow. within one lunar distance and, you know, so this one was the 86 since the start of the year. So it's looking more and more likely that we'll break through that 100 mark, probably set a record. Uh, yeah, it's busy out there. It's getting very busy. 18 to 42 feet, they're estimating this one to have been in as far as size. And talk about plasma discharge. We have more than 120,000 lightning strikes leaving... 15,000 people in the dark during extreme weather in, su in southern uh, Australia. 
And this is, again, you know, when we lose the magnetosphere as it keeps dropping. And we don't really know. I, I haven't really been able to get any numbers as far as how much more it's declined. It feels like they're trying to cover it up. Yeah, it does feel like they are definitely covering stuff up. But we've seen unusual uh, aurora going on, unusual events with, you know, sprites up in the sky as well. And then you have this going on. Um, as as many of you are probably aware of, check out, you know, the, the Thunderbolts project. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the ele electric universe is an interesting theory, and it's feeling more and more accurate to more and more people all the time. Mm -hmm. And you want to know something really creepy? What? Oh, yeah. This. this. So we were talking yesterday. We were talking. Oh, look at it. It just disappeared. It just disappeared. Yes. It just disappeared. That's crazy. Did you guys see the ad that was there? Anyway, it was for saunas. And we twice, twice now in 24 hours, we talked about something mm -hmm. and didn't do any Google searches or anything. And ads appeared about what we talked about. That was really creepy. And isn't it amazing that they took the ad down as soon as I was going to point it out to you guys. So Cindy had said, boy, I would love to have a sauna. And boom, there's there's <laughs> wooden saunas up there. And I had a guitar string uh, that broke. So I was restringing a guitar and said, you know, you know, because I, I had um, gotten rid of a couple of guitars. I said, you know, I don't have any sort of electric acoustic anymore. And boom, first thing I looked at when I pulled up, um, you know, I don't even know what I pulled up. It might have been Drudge Report this morning. There's electric guitars, mm -hmm. you know, electric acoustic guitars, just like I had talked about up there on ads. AI at its best. Guys, they're listening to us. Mm -hmm. they're, they're listening to us. We don't even have to have a microphone on. You know, they're listening to us as we look at some of the lightning going on. And we have a low pressure intensifying into a tropical depression. Now, this one's going to end up more than likely turning into a tropical storm and striking the Philippines. It has been a busy year out there for storms, for hurricanes, tropical storms. It's been busy with everything. Yes, it really has. And so we have Mount Etna and giving off, giving off some emissions here, some mm -hmm. ash emissions. This, this one made the aviation color code raised to red and so we're watching mount etna and we watch etna we watch vesuvius we watch pele because of what edgar casey says that when you see them all going off then you only have a little while before it starts to roll good to know and we do have a couple of um, good sized earthquakes that came through we have a deep 6.1 that hits south of fiji it's an active area and and you do see them in this uh, size quite often so that wouldn't really get me nervous about anything and the uh, depth was 463 kilometers so definitely deep and then we have a shallow 6.0 straight across from it heading over to South America and hit the West Chile rise now that one was shallow and get ready if you're in the West guys Whew, it's gonna get cold Arctic freeze set to break 142 year old temperature record in Cheyenne, Wyoming. All of, all around Montana, Wyoming, uh, it's going to get extremely clo cold, and also down into Kansas and Texas, and New Mexico and uh, Colorado, Utah. Big big cold front coming in. Uh, I know we were looking and it was saying locally we're going to be anywhere from. 15 to 40 degrees below typical and it's been running above typical mm -hmm. you know where we've been uh the last almost a month now and so you know brace yourself because what we see is we got tremendous rapid change in both directions you know going on right now and we see nasa has awarded nokia to deploy cellular network 4g and then eventually 5 five on the moon you know they already got earth screwed up enough now they got to go to the moon right yep yep now they're starting to it feels like they really are speeding up with things you know because they're talking about actively putting uh people back up on the moon and then using that as a launching pad to go to mars so it's just, a, I think, a little bit of disclosure, you know, at some point in time, maybe before the infamous 2025 happens, 
they'll let us know. Oh, you know what, by the way? Yeah, we have bases on the moons of Saturn and Jupiter. Yeah, a little drippy disclosure there. So yeah, Nokia, uh, $14.1 million to deploy a cellular network on the moon, the freaking moon. Wow. (laughs) There you go. Well, NASA at it again, never a straight answer. Guys, thank you so much for your support on Patreon and Ko-Fi. We couldn't do it without you. Stay prepared. God bless and namaste. Namaste.